the truth we are blood Let's see what we can do here today. Let's see what we can do here today. I don't know, I'm dating this one. One chick that's named Crystal. Uh, she's African American. Um, yeah. I don't know how it's gonna go down with that. I seriously don't. Uh, Fourth note, I don't know where it is at. Sick as a dog. And that's still not the quality. He's recovering. That. She's number five. I don't know what the mystery person is. I got quite a bit of mystery people. I gotta check out their house. Good evening, my dear colleague. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling.
Good evening, my dear colleague. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. Okay. Yeah. Guns, I don't need the glass. No, I might need that. Small boss, ready by camera. Locked, alright. It's locked, alright, from the other fucking side. I can tell you. So I gotta spend my time going all the way around the motherfucker and everything. Okay. doesn't go anywhere, does it? Uh, i not. Game. So 
So I gotta wrap all the way around. With stamina, but you have still have the damage rate. Less stamina. You don't have to worry about so much stamina you being used.
These have to take grain anywhere, so I think what we're going to do tomorrow, Joey, is mm -hmm. we're going to do the same thing we did last week, Joey. What's that? Well, uh, we'll take grain, run around doing, looking at furniture and stuff, and then we're going to go uh, store them later. Okay? Okay. Probably going to go. The only thing is, we want to do, we got to do really early in the morning because fucking furniture stores are going to be closed. Some of them are closed at noon time. I don't know if you realize that or not. I was going to do it on Thursday, tired, and then I was going to do possibly today. She decided, well, we might as well wait till tomorrow. That way we're not running around going stuff, blah, 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 whatever. Now we're going to do it today. <sighs> she and I decided she wasn't going to do it. We'll just go to the store, I guess, tomorrow, whatever, with her. And like, whatever, I don't care. She's gonna be disappointed if, she don't get the, if we don't get up and go fucking do this early in the morning because the fucking stores are gonna be closed. Fucking some of the purchase stores are closed at this time. I wish you realized that or not. Some of them don't care to me. But, uh, well, we'll go over. We'll, I was gonna go to the one up and that was time to burn this joint where you bought your, mm -hmm. your mattress and stuff. Go to maybe up here in the lots or maybe check out the prices up here. And then the only other place is up at Hart Moms. They're only other fucking furniture stores that are open anymore. So fucking wool furniture, they're not open anymore. They're closing. It kind of sucks because wool furniture always had decent stuff. A lot of times they had better stuff than Ashley's. That's why a lot of times I've heard this go to wool furniture and lots of fucking furniture. Because they got more selection. Ashley's sells Ashley furniture. That's it. And I got down Pat's town. He sells Ashley furniture too, but I don't know what else he sells. He sells a couple other brands too. Heart bombs, I don't know what they sell. Of course, unclean. Uh, unclean freight. Unclean freight, uh, they used to be down there near York and stuff, but they've been closed down for years. God, I can't even remember the last time I was down there. You guys were probably, you guys were probably young then, the last time I was down there. Christ, that's been, well, I know it's been over half a dozen years, probably been fucking 10, 10 years or more since the last time I was down there. I don't even remember when they were closed down. I was, last time I was down there was a couple years before they closed. Oh my, that must have been three, four years before they closed down. It's like... It's like that place over there fucking uh, York now. That, they're supposed to have cheap furniture. Well, it ain't that much cheaper than buying Ashley's. At least ashes, I know that's decent quality stuff instead of wherever the fuck they even got. God only knows where the fuck that came from. And their sale price compared to Ashley, where Ashley's high zeros are stuff on sale, it was the same price. It was just about the same fucking price. It was less than hundred dollars difference between the two of them where it came to stuff that was on sale. So you might as well buy a fucking ashes. I know that's decent quality stuff. I mean, it might not be as good as uh, 
mean, it's not going to be a single. Kind of lazy boy, but you know. There's quality of some of this other shit. We don't even know where half the shit's coming from. Half the shit coming, can be from, coming from China, could be coming from Mexico. You don't know where the fuck it's coming from. First sure I'll up and walk because I'm over here with a bunch of time. See what the deal is with my tags. I still haven't got any tags. I still got tags from like two weeks ago. I can go to Parker Center. I can Parker Center to the Parker Gold address.
This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. They were fine earlier, and then like I rooting up the thing, and I don't know what the fuck's going on. This shit doesn't make any fucking sense. That was fucking stupid what it just did. With enough money to buy paper stuff to tie all the Yeah, enough. Last night, the Lincoln was falling in. Yeah, it still doesn't make any sense. Still doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. That pisses me off. I was like, yeah, now I don't have any XP of blood at all. Please, somebody game create this game create the the people that created this game. Please make more sense. This does not make any sense at all. Uh, I wish it did, but it doesn't.
Should be unlocked by the other side when I unlocked it right.
Hello, Jonathan. Please come in. Upstairs. Shoes. Is the door even open? It does. Yes, it does. No invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. No sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the killer. Emily wanted to become a vampire. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? For our country, for our liberty, for our family. But who? Blood. I should follow the trail. Who are you? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. I'm the Marquis de bois Colombe, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I intend to do so very soon, thank you. But for the moment, I'd like to shed light on the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. And who exactly are you? I am Jacques-Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de bois -Colon. At your service, my dear cousin. You're French, but your English is quite good. I was born in France, sir, but I consider myself a traveler of this world. Mm, so many countries, so many tantalizing tastes. Dear cousin, are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? Uh -huh. What are you doing here? I recently decided to visit London. I've always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate, yet intense spectacle. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, sir. And probably before. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show. Have fun. Believe me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair. I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman? Yes, the meeting turned messy. I'm afraid I ruined my last wedding coat. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. What happened? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? The body rejected my blood. It happens, you know, sometimes even with voluntary prey. 
At least her gurglings brought me some fun until the artery burst. I believe you, sir. Emily's diary confirms your statement. Oh, Emily was her name. Quite charming. Well, mystery solved then. Yes, I suppose so. You can go. And so can you. Farewell, sir. May you enjoy the spectacle of this fallen city as much as I do. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I have found out what happened to your friend, Emily. I can handle the truth. There's no need to hide the bloody details. Your friend was planning to become a vampire. She thought she'd met an honest one and made a deal with him. Unfortunately, Emily did not survive the process. My mother told me many times about the risks of being turned. I often suspected she exaggerated the danger to avoid me being tempted. No, the risk is real. Have you any idea what a body has to endure? To become an organism entirely consumed by its need to process and recombine blood? I should never have talked to Emily about vampires. I never thought she'd actually try it without me. Thank you, sir. Here, take this for your discretion. Okay. Do you need my medical attention, Charlotte? I am fine, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. I can't believe the game just did that to me. Dead, pale, dead, and it was like some other people are like dead, but I was like, yeah, that I couldn't even. Even him, dead, like really?
Where am I supposed to find find an exquisite restaurant for me? A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing.
Dr. Dr. Reed. The great knight, what? I have found a restaurant that could satisfy you, Mr. Russell. The most intriguing and exotic restaurant in London. Really? You have piqued my interest. Where is it? It's a place where you eat in complete darkness and try to identify your meal without anything but your palate. My, oh my! How interesting! It could even be fun to eat a little croissant et fruit that way. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. Please, have this for your research. Ooh. Goodbye, Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. The great night, what? I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell.
Why are vampire hunters sniffing around here? I need to find out what they're on. This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. This one's neck is broken. He was young. Probably the son. lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school.
women's right to vote is only the first step. It's yes. locked all right. Good evening, Good evening. Jonathan. How are you? I'm still I'm investigating still from inside the Ascalon Club. Can we talk? Of course, oh. my dear. How is your investigation going? I have decided to explore beyond the dictates of reason. What do you mean? You may on occasion find yourself closed when you visit me. If so, it is because I have gone undercover. Sort of. Who are you going to surveil? I hope you're not considering spying on McCullough or the guard at Prewan. No. I intend to ask a few questions in parts of town I rarely venture into. Dirty places where a delicate lady like myself should never be seen. When will you return? As soon as possible. And I don't intend to stay away for long. There are many paintings adorning the walls here. Yes. Did you paint them? No, my dear. But some of them. I have had a long time to learn from the best. I'm currently working on what could be my greatest masterpiece. What is this masterpiece? Your portrait, my dear Jonathan. It will be my gift to you, if I ever have time to finish it. Have you met any famous painters? Are you trying to divine my age by cross-checking historical dates, my dear? That's a devious parlor trick. Well, Elizabeth, I tried my best. Don't I deserve some reward, at least? Well, if you must know, I even posed for the greats. Now that you know it, you may recognize me when visiting museums. I have investigated new sources of infection, and I may have found a new type of scowl. One suffering from heavy mutations that is extremely contagious. Scowls come in various forms, you know. They are simply degenerate versions of their makers. I believe these families are different, and I'm currently pursuing a lead. 
I know I can find the true source of contagion by finding who created these creatures. That would be great news. Be very careful, my dear, when dealing with such creatures. Goodbye, my dearest. Goodbye, my beloved. I cannot enter. locked. There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that.
species. For in front of you stands the tall queen. Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? Should be unlocked. I cannot enter.
testify to her kindness and beauty. For now she hides in shadow, ugly and sin. But when you burn and die, she I don't know how to get the hell over there. Who are you? You who dared enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah, but Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you, but I can help you. I'm a doctor, Miss Fletcher. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die. For that was her final wish. Your blood arise and save your queen, my son. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. But you just said... That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must. 
of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. McCullum. How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that scal infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCullum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theatre right now. It's locked, all right. The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my research during the can't even reach. He can't even reach that window, so that's why it's unlocked. I can't climb up there! Are you serious? It's like about 10 feet. You can jump up fucking up there. You can almost jump up there. Not even 10 feet, but like 7 foot. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Do you need a moon to get into the crazy fucking Olympics at that time? Oh, come on. Can't reach it. What do you mean you can't reach it? It's only seven foot. You can't jump up there and grab it on the ledge. These people want me dead. I need to leave now. It's 9 o'clock, and I'm gonna play a little bit of Far Cry after I'm done with this. New Dawn.
So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing. Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not well, man. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. So many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece, and you have. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. Okay. You need some rest, Clement. You should try to sleep. What do you need from me, Jonathan? Venus, why do you worry so much about your family's reputation? Everyone laughs at Clarence now. And they avoid me because they believe I share his insane opinions. I'm a leper in my own community.
We meet again, Mr. Kamara. In a more peaceful situation. Dr. Reed. Still visiting London by night? We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmare since I escaped that filthy jail. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. In recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? We were young, such joyful dreamers then. But I stopped laughing long ago. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. Can you change? And is it what you really want? If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. There is no need to thank me. Rescuing a London citizen should not be out of the ordinary, though I'm afraid it may appear so in these difficult times. You did not only rescue me, you fought for me. You put your life in danger to... ...if you're attacked again. I don't know. I've heard about these men and women who patrol the West End every night, chasing criminals like my abductor. Maybe I should join them. Tell me, Tadao, why was your abductor so interested in your passion for astronomy? I don't know. We met a few times at the Royal Greenwich Observatory. He seemed to share my hobby. Then he invited me to his house and locked me in. Yes, astronomy is a fascinating subject. When I was, when a, I was a child, my mother was a telescope, telescope my sister. My sister. We, spent we spent many a pleasant evening stuff. Stars are not just dots in the sky, Doctor. They are the key to our understanding of the cosmos. They remind me of the 
remind us how insignificant we are. You're right. But children love magic and stories. I remember our mother told us constellations have the power to protect us. Protection by the light of the stars. That's sweet. You remember the name of these constellations? Cygnus. The constellation that was supposed to protect Mary. Memory's a strange thing. I can recite without hesitation the names of the 88 constellations. Yet I barely remember my own childhood. Did he fake his interest in astronomy to get close to you? No. In his madness, he spoke about a blood sacrifice to be made to his master when the stars aligned to a specific configuration. see them again. Will they ever know I died here? Will they remember me? Good evening, Archer. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not well, man. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. For as long as I've been a member, I've never seen so few vampires attending the club nights. Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. Welcome back, Dr. Reed. For as long as I've been a member, I've never seen so few vampires attending the club nights. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed walls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. 
Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Barrow. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. I did my best. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Ekon he deserves to be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, I'm the best candidate for such a task. I can hear the hesitation in your voice, Dr. Reed. I admire a man of principles. But in this matter, there is more at stake than your moral comfort. It's not a moral question, Lord Redgrave. It's the responsibility of giving immortality to a man I barely know. Nonsense. Aloysius has been a member of the Ascalon for years. This is but the fruition of a long-held plan. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson Estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. <laughs> Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. Yeah, great. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then. Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body. But some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. That sounds like a stupid. Bye, Lord Redgrave. Understand, Understand you who you have to Very well, Very well. Proceed. proceed. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave.
Okay, that's a little bit. I personally went patrolling last night in the West End, and I saw foreign echoes. This is an outrage. We shall chase these intruders down. Okay. I think we're safe for now. I pursued and killed the last hunter with my own hands as he tried to escape the club. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson. To make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I won't do it. The very thought of it makes me sick. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turned the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord, Lord Redgrave was unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information is correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. What would happen if I made Dawson an Echon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. So he wants me to give him another. Yeah.
It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sign him. Because, like she just said, the guy's a tyrant. That doesn't look good. I think this passage could lead me close to the Lord Dawson's mansion. It does. It hurts so much. It does hurt.
it's locked all right. Just leads to nowhere.
It's locked. I cannot enter. Are you all right, miss? Who are you? What do you want from me? My name is Jonathan Reed. I'm a doctor. What happened? Why are you here? I'm Louise Teasdale. I was kidnapped a few weeks ago by a vampire. Don't laugh, please, sir. It's no joke. I believe you, Miss Teasdale. That monster told me my father was dead, that no one was waiting for me outside. You're safe. You don't have to worry about the vampire. You should just return home. Thank you, sir. I hope we'll meet again soon, because I'd really like you to teach me how to get rid of these creatures. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful until we meet again.
Good evening, Miss Price. How are you tonight? Dr. Reed, I didn't know you had returned from the war. I had a new doctor when you left, but he's not as kind as you. Always glad to see a former patient in good condition. It's been a long time. Too long indeed. And as a token of my appreciation, I'll grant you the best price if you fancy buying anything from my humble shop. What can you tell me about yourself, Miss Price? I'm still managing my shop. The only difference is, since the quarantine, we're open at night. You, on the contrary, seem to have changed a lot. Really? Have I changed that much? It must have been the war. And the night shifts since my return. Don't get me wrong, Dr. Reed, you're still handsome. Just maybe a little bit wiser. More serious. It suits you well. Tell me more about yourself. No new fiancé? I remember you were hoping to get remarried. I'm sure you must have a few suitors. Who would marry an old bat like myself with a grown daughter and a little business? As you know, I only fancy handsome men. Have you noticed anything in particular in this part of town recently? Other than you coming back to cheer me up? Nothing at all, Dr. Does your daughter still worry you, Miss Price? I remember you were often concerned about her health when she was younger. Have you not seen Carol since you returned? She's almost a young woman now. And she'll always remain my sweet little baby. So you're less afraid? Some things never change. Carol is still too clumsy for her own good. Sometimes her innocence puts her in real danger. Why would her innocence put her in danger? She does not realize how cruel life can be. Maybe I was a bad mother to protect her too much. My poor dear Carol. You have every reason to be cautious, Miss Price. Especially in these difficult times. Maybe you could talk with her, Dr. Reed. It would be nice to have a man here. We would both feel safer. Why are you finger charge fucking long? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. Goodbye for now, Miss Price. Why are you your fingers in? I am glad to see you again. Good evening, sir. May I ask you what you're doing here at this late hour? I'm conducting an investigation about the epidemic in this part of town. And who are you, sir? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, from the Pembroke Hospital. May I ask who you are, and why all the questions? I'm Detective Inspector Charles Albright from Scotland Yard. And I don't find your, your answer convincing. What is a what Pembroke, is Pembroke doctor, doctor doing in the West End at this time of night? I'm the one asking questions. 
Especially when there's a killer on the loose. What killer? I'm not going to discuss that with the civilian, sir. Haven't I told you about the investigation I'm conducting? Perhaps I could help you. All right. Without giving you too much information, I'll tell you this. I'm convinced there's a homicidal maniac on the loose, using the epidemic to disguise his kills. And what about the epidemic? We both know the situation is critical, don't we, Doctor? <laughs> Colleagues of mine die almost every day. Why are you investigating at night? Criminals rarely act in daylight. But since you are also a night rider, have you noticed anything strange which requires police attention? Does the name Fergal ring a bell? Fergal Bancher. Of course it does. Fergal Bancher, the butcher of Galway. Hung in Dublin in 1857 for murdering more than 20 men with his bare hands. Why are you so interested in dead criminals, sir? What are you really doing here? I told you. I'm a detective inspector from Scotland Yard. Investigating suspicious cases in the area. Do you work alone? Yes. The situation is difficult for the police. Many of us are sick, and since the summer strike, most men apply a work to rule on their patrols. What about the situation in the East End? Why are there no police there to protect the civilians? I know, it's a shame, but we just don't have enough men to cover the entire city. operandi varies. Sometimes violent and brutal. Sometimes precise and swift. How could different killers inflict the same wounds? That's my main problem. If my theory is correct, maybe we're facing a group of individuals sharing the same violent tendencies. Perhaps a sadist cult. What are you investigating, exactly? I have a missing woman. Possibly abducted a few nights ago. Louise Teasdale. It seems you already found my other missing person, Mr. Tadao Kamura. Tell me about Louise Teasdale. She's a waitress. Our father reported her missing. We don't have enough men to search for her, sadly. Do you have any idea where she could be? No. But I feel she's been abducted. She went to a pub a few nights ago and vanished. I thought about the sewers, but... Such an investigation. Do you know anything in particular about a man called Aloysius Dawson? Who doesn't know the man? I think he intervened personally to put an end to the police strike of last August. What else can you tell me about him? Aloysius Dawson is exactly the kind of powerful and influential man who could commit murder and get away with it with just one phone call. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Is there anything wrong? No, it's just... your name sounds familiar. And your face. Have we met before? I think I would remember. So I suppose the answer is no. That's odd. I'm certain I've already heard of you. My name is Pericles Baker. Does that mean anything to you? I'm afraid not, sir. But it's a pleasure to meet you anyway. Hmm. The pleasure is mine. 
I guess. I only wish I could remember when it was that we met. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Baker. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? We are waiting. Waiting for someone. And why are you waiting for this person? Because we need to leave this city as soon as possible. Why do you want to leave the city? I'm not really sure. Can you tell me anything about this district? As you like asking questions so much, would you allow me to ask you one first? Please, be my guest. Do you like this city? I know we are not living in the most peaceful of times, but I have learned to appreciate London's complexity. Yes, me too. This city tests us. It invites us to find ourselves, to discover our true nature, scattered throughout its dark streets. But what if we don't like what we find? Do we ever know who we are? I wonder sometimes. Or maybe it is the journey to find out who we are that changes us. And what do you do, sir, for a living, that is? I stopped working when I decided to leave, when I realized what I wanted. It's something this city can't provide. But what were you doing before you took this decision? Does it really matter anymore? Considering the past seems so pointless to me. I have lived in this city all my life. And now I think it's over. Tell me more about why you want to leave London then. I just don't belong here anymore. I had to convince my brother to leave London because I know we need to find another life out of the city. Who are you waiting for? I'm sure he has a name. I really can't answer that question since I don't know that person. And why is that? This person is mostly my brother's acquaintance. I don't even know his real name. Only that this man could help us leave this city once and for all. But why would you need this person's help to leave London anyway? Well, I thought we should have left this cursed place already, but my brother convinced me to stay a while longer, and here we are. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I've heard this is a man who has searched for his place in the world for a long time. I hope he found it. Goodbye, Mr. Baker.
Good evening, oh. Miss Price. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you remember me? Dr. Reed? Yes, of course. You are the doctor who healed me and my mum. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good to see you too, Carol. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I, I did not hurt myself recently. I know how to take care of myself now. I'm almost a grown-up. Great. Why are you awake at night, Carol? I am helping my mother in her shop. It's not easy, but I'm a grown-up now. I'm sure your mother is grateful for your help. I do the best I can. But I'm so clumsy sometimes. I, I, I drop things. I injure myself. It's a, it's a good thing my mother has the patience of an angel. Why is work not easy? Is something or someone bothering you? Oh no, most people are gentle with me. But, but I'm so nervous sometimes. I, I pay no attention and hurt myself. Good thing my mum learned first aid. Uh, okay. What can you tell me of the people living nearby? I don't speak to many people, except our customers. It's not easy to make friends. And with the epidemic, it's even more difficult. What can you tell me about the epidemic? Some of our regular customers have left London. Some others only send their housemaids now. Everybody fears the contagion. I've even seen men with weapons. Have you no friends at all? No. Mr. Nitter, the good part of Byron was always nice to me. Does he not come by? No. no. Mum said he was weird. Always reciting poetry about a girl he'd met in Whitechapel. I wonder who this Camellia may be. Do you enjoy working with your mother? Oh, yes, Doctor. My mother raised me alone after my father died. We've always lived together, and she has always watched over me. Do you remember your father? No, I was just a baby then. My mother always told me how strong and good he was. Do you ever think about getting married now you're young? Oh, no, Doctor Reed. Mum always says I'm still a child who has no idea how tough life can be. No husband would like a clumsy girl like me. Have you ever met the famous Aloysius Dawson? Yes. A very strange man. Not very nice. What do you mean? He said he was ready to pay good money for rare books. And then laughed at what we showed him. Goodbye, Carol. Good evening, Miss Price. You know you can call me Carolyn, my dear doctor. Carol's gratitude is exemplary. She seems determined never to leave you. I'm taking care of my daughter as well as I can. It's not always easy, but she's the best gift life gave me. But she'll probably leave you someday to live her own life. Will that be difficult for you? Why would she leave? Children sometimes stay with their parents until the end. For they know no one else will love them as much. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that, that, that's nice to know. What's your question? Goodbye for now, Miss Price. It's locked. Good evening, young lady. My mother always prefers when people simply call me Carol.
Father, where are you? I can't see you. I'm so afraid, Mother. Good evening, Miss Price. You know you can call me Carolyn, my dear Doctor. Tell me, Carolyn, do you often wound or hurt your daughter by mistake? No. I always thought it was Carol's clumsiness that caused these incidents. Maybe it's a family trait, Doctor. You really believe it's just bad luck and being clumsy, then? Of course, Doctor. What else could it be? I have nothing to hide. You are responsible for your daughter's many injuries and scars, Carolyn. You brutalize her, don't you? How could I abuse my own flesh and blood? This is nonsense. It would be like hurting myself. You really believe you've done nothing wrong, don't you? How long has this been going on for? I should have seen it when you were my patients. Seen what? Child abuse? Are you mad, Dr. Reed? I dedicated my whole life to my precious Carol. She is a part of me. Yes. Even her name is just a part of yours. This is a terrible tragedy. Something of an unknown disorder. My God. Abuse that comes from overwhelming love. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How dare you say something like that? What kind of a monster do you think I am? Speak to me, Carolyn. Why do you behave like this? How does it make you feel to hurt Carol before cajoling her? I... I don't know. It makes me feel good to take care of my daughter. I need to feel useful. No one ever takes care of me. I need someone to take why care of me. Why is her... Okay, why is her hand so long fingers, right? Doesn't match with her face of the... Inches of where her face is. And then her hands are tan. Like... She's... Like, I don't Did get it. Carol is a person. Not a toy. Are they gloves? Not a I don't understand it. The poor girl would put her hand in a flame to please you. They are so You're long, too. You're trapped in this toxic relationship. Carol and I are perfectly happy. Leave us be. How stupid I was to believe you could be a suitable husband. A suitable husband? You're a threat to Carol, and no child should feel unsafe in the presence of their parents. No, Dr. Reed. You are the threat. You are threatening to separate a mother from her only daughter, from the meaning of her life. Okay. I don't know how she got through the counter, but okay.
still conducting your nocturnal survey? Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of this bastard. What are you investigating, exactly? I have a missing woman. Possibly Tell me, do you have... No. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Reed, at last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. My name is Usher. Usher Talltree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoke. Okay.
MOT pilot proof, MOT pilot proof.
boys and girls, YouTube is uh, basically fucking up their bullshit. Uh, I got like this comment thing, and it's like, oh, remember to keep comments peaceful to follow our community guidelines. Uh, yeah, this is basically communist. Uh, I put like uh, poopy smiley faces and stuff like that because I was in the bathroom or whatever, and then they have these guidelines, and it just guys guidelines just popped up, and then it's like d they deleted the comment, and it was my own comment on my own, my own fucking channel. Wow. Okay. Um. YouTube wants to play that game. Uh, then YouTube that owns this company is basically fucking up. It they're they're fucking up pretty much badly. YouTube is getting very bad. YouTube is getting very bad, like fucking Facebook bad. They're they're fucking up. Fucking fucking up big times. So I would not even buy one of their shares. I wouldn't buy any YouTube or Google shares. Because actually YouTube and Google shares is in the same shares. Yeah, it's getting to be fucked up. Really I'm really glad I met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me the truth. The cards told you to expect that. Yes, they tell me everything. They've told me of your unquenchable thirst for blood. Be wary, Ekon. I've heard such a rich diet can be bad for the heart. Oh, really? How do you measure the amount of blood in my heart? I told you. The cards always tell the truth. Well, most of the time. Is it possible to tell me my future? Vampire's fate is much more difficult <coughs> to read, Doctor. But I can try. I would rather not know. How do you measure the amount of blood on my hands? I told you. Is it possible? Vampire. All right. Let me hear it. You'll cast your heart into the fire without hesitation, Jonathan. For pain is only for the mortals. Okay. May I ask you about the Brotherhood? Of course. But I must warn you that there are some subjects we consider taboo, in spite of our fondness and acceptance of your kind. I know there is no love lost between the Guard of Prequel and the Brotherhood. What caused this rift? It was 1801. The Brotherhood was stronger then. A strength that made them hungry for ever greater power. An argument divided them, and the wound never healed. What was the nature of the disagreement? The problem was that both sides considered themselves the legitimate heirs of the original Brotherhood. We divide up the books, the relics, not always fairly or with consideration. Who founded the Brotherhood? That's precisely the kind of question I cannot <coughs> answer. It is delicate and may reveal some of our secret traditions. So you're not just a club of academics and scholars? Once upon a time, very long ago, the Brotherhood did more than simply study the vampires. They took actions to eliminate the more ferocious and corrupted. Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several... The Golden Dawn, for instance. 
is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander, yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. I wonder if my comments was on there. That was only one comment that I had on there. And all the rest was gone. Are you serious? This is my channel and I'm saying hi on this channel and it didn't say hi to me. At all. So this guidelines bullshit. I'm going to tell you this bullshit. Let me see this bullshit. Yes, let's make this happy ass video for their retard retarded discretions. Fun and safe. It's called flagging because we are YouTube is now Google and now we're. Scam arts. Now we're doing scam arts. NGOs, government organizations, and academics all over the world help us flag. Well, thank you. I don't want my comments to be flagging. I don't want my own comments to be flagging. I want my own comments to be on my channel. Uh, I don't give a shit what they fucking have. These guidelines. These guidelines are a bunch of fucking shit. It's a bunch of shit. So. If I flag YouTube from Google, doesn't YouTube owes me money? I, I think that should be. I think that should be done. I think. I, th I think that should be done. I think if I flag Google for making a mistake by um, fucking up my shit, I should get fucking money. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need my help? Yes, please. 
Would you be kind enough to tell me what the time is? That's all you need to know. Well, is it not important to know? As important as where you are? Or who you are? I suppose you're right. And who are you then, sir? I am Agamemnon Baker. Like my brother, I think we need to leave this city immediately. And my brother and I rarely agree on anything. May I ask what you're doing outside at this hour of night? I don't know. You should ask my brother instead. It was his idea in the first place. You must have your own ideas. From what I have managed to understand, I guess we're supposed to wait here. Waiting for someone to come. You know what pisses me off is... What can you tell me about this part of town? It's the only place I... You know what pisses me off is uh, they're they're put adding on more guidelines on the, everything to be more stupid. See, this is what happens when they put guidelines on the shit, and then it's my own community, it's my own channel. So, why are they taking my other comments down of my own channel? By the way, this is my own channel and they're doing this. This is absolutely fucking bullshit. Four minutes ago and this should have been... Alright, uh, okay. So I'm gonna go with my settings. Let's go with my settings here and find out what the fuck are they doing. If I cannot change this into my settings. Okay, that's that. What's that? This helps hide the mature Okay. Okay, let's go to my channel and says go to my channel and I'm gonna go put hi on there. I did not ask for a modernization of any chats at all. I do not need this guideline. I think it's fucking ridiculous because everybody has a freedom of speech. I swear, I, I, it, everybody has a freedom of speech. So why are we? Remember to keep comments respectful. of our community guidelines this is how weak the community uh, this is how weak people can get this is how weak this shit is this is how weak make people so fucking weak and so sensitive about their feelings because you don't have no freedom of speech oh I don't like what you just said so I'm gonna do that um this is fucking bullshit. I put hi on my own on my own channel. Um and it's still doing this. It still has the guidelines even if I did change this. Uh, I wish they can get rid of this.
Three strikes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how I can't make another YouTube channel. Yada yada da 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 da. Let's add some more bullshit. Blah 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 blah. Uh, blah 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 blah. Another bullshit. Blah 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 blah. To our many community. Guideline strikes within 90 days per minute. Which is fucking bullshit. First time violating our the community guidelines. Community guidelines that are fucking bullshit. Man! Yeah, they're, they're making more bullshit. They're just going like Facebook. This is fucking bullshit. I have never... Uh, to me, it's fucking bullshit. Fuck your shit. Okay, let's submit this... D dirty, raggedy... Fucking shit. Dirty mother Dirty ass motherfuckers. Just dirty ass motherfuckers. Dirty ass motherfuckers. Dirty ass motherfuckers. I'm gonna tell you this. You YouTube, you are becoming fucking pansies with this shit. You need to I'm gonna press high again and see if it actually did it when I did the fucking quiz the fucking thing. Oh, that was my one video. Oh, my mistake. Oh, that was my one video. <laughs> but like I said, uh, this is some community guidelines. They put in community guidelines. Oh, I thought it was pushing a live feed, but no, it was a video. But, uh, my bad. Uh, fuck. Fuckery, fuckery. But they put too much guidelines into YouTube and they doing it like Facebook and Google is softening it up. YouTube is fucking soft as going soft on people. I used to remember the rude comments. Did I flag some of their things? Actually, I flag some of them that are really just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Most of the time, I didn't. Why is that? Because I'm not feeling happy here anymore. Are you? I'm not feeling happy anymore. Are you? Yes, I, I am. Still enjoy living here. No matter how difficult it can be sometimes. Then I am sincerely happy for you. True happiness in life seems to be the most difficult goal to reach these days. Yeah, while I'm drinking, everybody fucking crying at me. May I ask why you've not gone? So exasperated by this long wait. I believe fear is holding us back. My brother would have said it's laziness, but it's just because he's proud of who I am. What can you tell me about your brother? He's older than me, I think. But the important thing is that I really hope I'll die before him. Grief would just kill me. You know? Is that all? Pericles is very attached to this city, and without my insistence, he would never leave this place. We don't often agree on anything, you see. Okay. There's no question. Who are you waiting for exactly? The more I think about it, the more I believe it's not exactly a person we are waiting for. 
But what else could it be, then? I don't know. A feeling? An event? An impulse? How can I tell? Something that would allow us to leave this trap. I'm afraid I'm not following you. What kind of trap are you talking about? Have you ever felt like life trapped you in a role that does not fit you? That you are not in your place? That sort of trap. Trap? And you think leaving London will free you? At least it will give us the chance to be free. That's more than our present situation. Hope, Doctor. Hope is what truly drives mankind. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? You should ask that question to my brother instead. Personally, I've not seen Aloysius for many years. Mm. Goodbye for now, Mr. Bacon. Good evening, Mr. Bacon. Hmm. Why do I always have feelings of deja vu when I talk to you? disagrees with your presence here. Agamemnon is naive sometimes. Although don't consider him a fool, sir. He is often more lucid than me. At least you both have the same difficulty explaining what you're doing, and for what reason. But is that not a common problem for all mortals? Okay. What can you tell me about your brother? If you are searching for a pleasant chat, you should speak with him instead of wasting your time with me. He has always been the more gentle of us. That's it? That's all you can tell me about him? For the time being, true kindness is the most valuable quality, my good sir. Goodbye, Mr. Bacon. Hello again, Dr. Reed. I think I'm gonna have to sacrifice one of them to find the other two answers. It's like the other fucking people that I had to deal with. sense at all. I should have told my brother to go sooner. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Hmm. Why do I always have feelings of deja vu when I talk to you? Tell me more about your strange feelings towards the city. I would be happy to describe them, but it's too hard to explain with mere words what I'm feeling. It's unclear, too confused. Go on, please. Where should I start? The world is chaos. Men go mad and nature itself runs roughshod over us all. This is not the first time mankind has faced a deadly epidemic or a war. Men kill each other while nature decides to kill them all. I don't know what scares me the most. Do you? Plagues and epidemics can be seen as an implacable force. A curse. But the ferocity of mankind worries me. 
For we choose what we do. Yes. At least nature is not aware of all the suffering she brings to us. At least that's what I am hoping. Pericles, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Perhaps it's time to leave. Perhaps we should stay a little longer. How can I tell? And where exactly are you thinking of going? In a place where I will finally have that feeling. To be where I belong. The world has to be meaningless chaos to make such a heaven plausible. How long have you been waiting for this man? Sometimes I feel as though I've been waiting for him for ages. Perhaps it is my role in life to wait for him. Not a pleasant thought. It could be dangerous for you, waiting here all night. That's quite true. But what other choice do we have? We are waiting here until we finally go. Why are you still waiting for this person? What would be the point of going before meeting the man, as he's going to help us leave? Mr. Baker, I have met many strange people during my life, but you are definitely one of the strangest. Really? I don't feel particularly odd or weird. All I want to do is leave. What's wrong with that? So in the end, was it you we were waiting for? Death was our destination.
when the hell am I gonna go to this mansion? I guess I gotta go underneath the ground and try to find where the tunnel goes to, but I don't know where the fuck it is, because it doesn't show me where the fuck it is. I cannot enter. Louise's father was determined to find and save her. Dead end. Oh, this is gonna be a mystery to solve. I think I went here before.
in there. But that doesn't go to that expansion. The I went over there before. It doesn't go to their, his mansion. I don't know where it goes to. It leads to one of these goddamn tunnels. I know that. It doesn't go there, so I'm really quite confused at the matter. Fucking dreams, but I ain't going to bed. Huh? I ain't your dreams, but I ain't going to bed at the time. I'm going to rest. Uh, oh, So I can't figure out shit, man. I think I missed something here. Why are you? I 
Uh, Miss Teasdale. Are you all right? How do you know my name? Who are you? My name is Dr. Reed. I managed to track you down thanks to your father. So my father really was looking after me. This man, this vampire told me my father was dead. Is it true? I'm afraid so. I'm so sorry, folks. But you are free to go, as your abductor is no more. I suppose my jailer also killed my father, didn't he? Thankfully, he did not search your father's corpse, where I found his notes describing where he might find you. You should read them. I must find my father's body. He deserves a proper burial. You need some medicine? Goodbye, Miss Teasdale, and be careful until we meet again. Okay. I gave her the note. I don't know why that this does not go, this does not go to this mansion. I'm trying to figure out where does this goes to, or anywhere it's fucking else. But this goes to, uh, this does not go into anywhere. That does not go anywhere either. So I'm gonna have to get back trace back, back to my trail. I do not know where this goes to. I should have been able to jump. This does not make no fucking sense at all.
I hate tunnels. I hate fucking tunnels. Because they can be misleading. back to where that belongs to but the thing is I'm trying to figure out where is the how to get up there
They, this leads me to the same way. I can't go any fucking where because it just leaves me leads it leads me to the same fucking places. This game's like, oh yeah, you get here, go here, This does not lead to its to engine. It just leads to fucking circles. It just leads to circles. It doesn't lead you nowhere. It leads you to fucking circles, and it tells you, Oh yeah, go to the mountain, 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 here, like, it's like a fucking, where is it fucking at, they two jackasses. <sighs> you go in circles, you're not even going anywhere. Trying to find this rich asshole's fucking mansion when you're trying to fucking make him an e uh echo, which is a vampire. Trying to make him an that. But you can't find his fucking mansion. Hey jackasses, I don't That leads to nowhere. It's pissing me off because it's like, oh yeah, I don't even see his fucking magic. I don't. Let's go over here. It points to this direction where I'm supposed to go for his fucking mansion, but I don't fucking see his fucking mansion. It's supposed to be like, oh yeah, this fucking tunnel leads you to nowhere. Put you in a fucking circle. There it is. It's a circle. It's all it is is a fucking circle. Like, where is this coming from? It leads you into a fucking circle every single fucking time. Where the fuck is this fucking mansion? It's stressing me the fuck out. I need a beat. This is fucking bullshit. I'm trying to go in fucking circles. Go in circles. Go in circles. Don't know where the fuck it is. I don't have to use it. Okay, I'm in this fucking tunnel again. For like fucking uh, 11 times. I walk through it. Walk 
So there's a fucking tunnel. Nothing there. I have to go through this fucking tunnel again. Like, how in the fuck do I get to there? There must be a different way to this. This leads to a tunnel. I'm all the way over here. No fucking clue. The last enemy that I had was over here somewhere. trail gets really dark from there like uh there's no glimpse there's that poor guy over there This uh, time for desperation. How to get in? How to get in? I can run up there.
Yeah, I'll lose my time. That's where I thought it was. And the game just sent me here telling me to go here. I figured it out. I thought I was that mansion right there, but I wasn't for certain. Ten. I don't know why they sent me to here. It's like they should have been like, oh yeah, that's on this map. I'll just be there. decide to not How to change clothes on How to change clothes on Vampire Oh, so you have to go to Dr. Reed's so I have to go back to the hospital.
All those time I was in circles, I don't know why. Dawson's mansion. Here I am at last. But the question remains Am I ready to make a dying man my progeny? I don't, know. I don't think I'm ready to fucking be my progeny. Finally, you're here, Dr. Reed. What took you so long? I had to pass several of your barricades and outposts to access your mansion, sir. Death, pestilence surround us. Time is against me. I see you've gathered some of the most expensive, albeit experimental, blood transfusion equipment available. All this could be so useful in a hospital. Yes, yes. Since Lord Redgrave sent me a doctor to perform my conversion, I thought you might find some of these devices useful. Most thoughtful. But tonight, I'm not here as a physician. But I feel reassured that a specialist such as yourself would help me to escape the Reaper. Very well. But before I proceed, I have a few questions for you. If you must, but be quick, for I don't have much time left in this life. First of all, I need to be sure that you know exactly what is going to happen to you, sir. I can assure you I'm as informed as any man can be. I have planned for this moment, Dr. Reed. Planned very carefully. Okay. So I'm going to end your life. Do you not wish to discuss the procedure? For even a minute. I don't have a minute to indulge in idle chatter. I can't feel my legs and the cold. So cold. I will become your maker. Do you understand what that means? Well, I certainly won't consider you my liege or some such drivel. You can be assured of that. You'll need to feed on warm blood. Blood from mortals. How do you feel about that? I'm rich, Dr. Reed, and powerful. I'm sure I'll be able to acquire all the blood I need without ever having to sully my own hands. What do you know about the Guard of Prewood? What I do know is that I'll crush anyone or anything that would dare to oppose me. Let's move on, then. Please, I'm cold and tired. I feel my life waning with every moment. But first, before you embrace immortality, what would you do with such a gift? That's a rather impertinent question, Dr. Reed. And I will do as I please. Answer me all the same. What will your first action be as an immortal? To save London. I will finance the most efficient quarantine ever seen. I will build a wall that will separate the sick boroughs from the healthy ones. Who gave you the right to decide the fate of thousands of people? My money. My money and my pending immortality gives me the needed authority, Doctor. I'm a businessman. I'm used to tough decisions. What an asshole. You really plan to build a quarantine wall across London? Yes. It will be tall and strong, separating the wheat from the chaff. By doing so, you will also create two separate prisons. Come, sir. An eminent doctor like yourself knows that such radical measures have proved efficient in the past. Let me guess. You mean to isolate the rich? This is a desperate measure for desperate times. England must prevail, Doctor, no matter the cost. 
Quarantine is not a bad idea, medically speaking. But I'm convinced this epidemic will not be contained by mere walls. As long as the right people are on the right side of the wall, that's all that matters. But you can't guarantee infection will not spread. Just one contagious carrier would be enough to create an apocalypse. The apocalypse is already knocking at the gate. We must be strong now. What if a new outbreak happens inside your walls? You'll have created a giant trap. That won't happen. As long as we dispose of anyone that is contaminated, contaminated. as soon as we I've heard enough. It's time to proceed. At last! All right, do what you have to do. If it hurts, so be it. I've been preparing such a long time for this. Turn him in his sacrifice. I will kill you in the bears. Listen, listen to me, Aloysius Dawson. You will forget your fear of dying, for it has poisoned your mind and made you bitter and ruthless since the death of your twin brother. You don't understand. Death is oblivion, the eternal void. I know there's nothing there. I saw it in Robert's empty eyes. I saw myself in that coffin. Death is painful for those who remain, not for those who have passed. All that occult gibberish you filled your head with has made you forget this simple truth. No! Death will not claim me. I have the power and the money. I've acquired the arcane knowledge needed. I believe there is magic. There are dark forces. You will provide me my extinction. Your ignorance makes you a fool. You have no idea. Look at me. Hunted like a beast. My family lost. Cursed. I have not escaped death. I have become it. No! There must be a way! I don't want to go like my brother did! I have money. Lots of money. Money won't ease your mind. I know you used to be a good religious master. So I offer the gift of peace, Lucius. The tranquility of a true death. I accept your offer. And I understand. No more fear, I will die a man of dignity, and a man at peace. They don't like that, but I'm going to tell them. Who's this asshole? Oh, I'm gonna talk to you. Is it done, Dr. Reed? Is Aloysius Dawson reborn as expected? I'm afraid Mr. Dawson finally chose to embrace life and death as a mortal. What do you mean? He has overcome his fear of dying. I let him rest and wait for death to come. What? This is unacceptable. Go back there! And make him the powerful Econ he's destined to be. No, Lord Redgrave. As a doctor and as an immortal, I can't. If you wish to make him your progeny, then proceed on your own. This is an outrage beyond words. This is betrayal, pure and simple. I should kill you on the spot. You swore on William Marshall's blood. Well, get rid of me then. From now on, you're an outcast. Banished. You are forbidden to ever appear in front of us again. Ascalon will smite you on sight, and your heart will be thrown to the rats. I'll leave you then. Have fun with your puppets and shadow plays, Lord Redgrave. Yes, go, traitor, and take that awful creature, that counterfeit of a woman I saw waiting for you, and be gone! 
Step away, traitor. Return to your dubious friends and your decrepit hospital. Do not dare show yourself again, you or that monstrosity you bring to my door. Step away, traitor. Return to your dubious friends and your decrepit hospital. Do not dare show yourself again, you or that monstrosity you bring to my door. Yeah, well. That old man is a horrible person. He wants to make a wall to make the poor people fucking suffer and then the rich people will be in the wall. Eh, yeah. We meet again at the strangest of times, young Echon. So do you serve the Earl of Bristol now? Old Bridget? What are you doing here? Your friend, the wise Echon. She sent me to warn you. Did anyone see you? It's a long way from the dock sewers, and hunters are patrolling the streets here. Who said I took the streets? How do you think I survived for centuries in this city without ever being seen? I know all her secrets. How did you meet Lady Asbury? She came to us in the sewers in search of answers. Just as you did. What kind of answers did you give her? I knew nothing of your maker, but we talked. We talked a lot. Her words and ideas are captivating. It is no surprise that you like her. I like her too. Lady Ashby in the sewers? Now that's a sight I wish I'd seen. She said she was your friend, and that she sought the identity of your maker. So I answered her questions. Lady Ashby? You know her? Tell me what's going on. The lady approached me but a few nights ago. Wanting to meet the sewer skulls. Once she questioned Harriet Jones, she agreed to help us. Harriet Jones is still with you then. How is she doing? Harriet remains angry, but is recovering slowly. Her mind is twisted, but at least her body is healing. Tell me what is going on. The lady asked us to keep an eye on your mortal doctor friend while you were away. We spotted the hunters. They were discussing plans to attack tonight. No time to lose, then. I must go there right away. I shall return to my den. Have you a message for the lady? Should I see her before you? Tell her I worry about her. Tell her I need to talk to her. Need to talk. Over. Love is a very more stronger words than those two words to come up with those, those that sentence is more stronger than we need to talk or we need to I'm worried about her. Yes. Tell her I love her. Is this still unknown to her? Go now and take care, young Ekon, for the flames are rising.
Elizabeth, I'm so happy to see you. I was so concerned. It is also good to see you in these darkened hours. Is all well, my dear? Indeed, we stand on the precipice. Has the news reached you of Edward Swansea? No. I returned home but moments ago. What of him? Your friend, the well-informed Old Bridget, tells me the guard of Prewen has assaulted Pembroke. I fear Edgar tops their bloody list. Bridget? She is such a tragic figure. And yet, I sense deep inside, she has a delicate, fragile soul. What are you hiding? You went to the sewers. Did you speak with Harriet Jones? Indeed, Jonathan. I seek the truth, just as you do. I was concerned for your safety. McCullum draws too close to you for my comfort. Fear not. I've evaded the hunters for many a year, and I intend to stay far from their gases, flames, and spikes. Now, speak to me of Dawson. I convinced Aloysius to embrace death as the ultimate gift of mortal life. I believe he found peace in the end. The cost must have been heavy indeed. I am proud of you, my love. Ascalon has defrocked me and threatens to hound me from the city. This was no doubt inevitable. You did what you thought was right at the time. One can ask no more. The Very important much so. task now at hand is to help 
poor Edgar. Now I am assured of your safety. That is precisely my intention. Good. Now go, my dear. And return with good news, with the greatest haste. Yeah, I'm not gonna get, have him make a wall. That's why I was like, I was like, kill him or no, I'm not gonna kill him. He's in due time. In due time, he will have. He will rest in peace. He will rest, but I don't know about peace. Now I gotta save Eggers behind from the hunters. Which then later I'm gonna probably gonna destroy Edgar anyways. Uh, we will cast you out. I didn't do what you please, so you didn't like it, that's too bad. I'm bad. Although I'm part, I would be part of that club, uh, what are you gonna do? Scribble my name out? Uh, whiten it out? Well, I don't know. Just gonna go by the bridge. Those bastards. What have they done to Edgar? Looks like he's wounded. I better follow the blood. McCullum and his thugs are taking the credit for Edgar's abduction. They really mean business. Ultraviolet curtains and ori powder. Ah! 
Joker Swansea's ah. always been a resourceful bastard. I bet he never told you he had this installed in case of a vampire attack. Says a lot about how much he trusts you. What have you done with Edgar? Don't worry. We don't kill humans. Even if your friend is deserving of a little punishment for that. What are you talking about? We know everything. Swansea and you created this bloody epidemic. You aim to unleash another disaster, just like William Marshall did. No! I'm trying to put it out in the aren't you? Where is the monster hiding? It's still in England, isn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about. Please listen to me. No tricks. That shit won't work on me. We've found proof in the theater. Doris Fletcher was your first experiment. Now where is Marshall? Speak! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so much for modern technology. Time for the tried and true. Do you know what this is, beast? This is a drop of King Arthur's blood. The blood of a true defender of Britain. Stronger than your evil powers. We're losing precious time. True enough. Soon I'll bring your head before your coward of a father. Come on, Reed. Try something else. Okay, I'll try something else. True defender of this land will protect me. Show some style. Fight like a man. If you're so innocent, why does Simple Knight burn you so much? Shall prevail. You can't accept the fact we're not enemies, can you? We always have been, and we always will be. Of all the evils that threaten mankind, your kind are the worst. Maybe I'm a monster. I'm not saying we could be friends, you and I. But perhaps we could collaborate to put an end to this epidemic. Never! We are pre-wing. We do not negotiate. We do not compromise. There is no way you'll ever let me be, McCullum. You'll always hunt me down, won't you? There is no escape, Reach. Kill me now. For there is no way you can sway me to your ideals. I'm going to embarrass him. I'm going to definitely embarrass him. Although I might get take away uh, 1,000 XP, I am definitely going to embarrass him. I'll make you a vampire. I'll make you one of us. No! Kill me! <laughs> Like no! No! And when I kissed you, uh, 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 I had no idea what I was doing. But now uh, I do. Consider this my kiss of Judas. Uh,
Welcome to the world through the looking glass. Sacrifice one thousand. Be having him in embarrassment. He wants to be a vampire hunter. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna have you and be embarrassed. We're gonna have you and being. He's gonna have him being embarrassed by being a vampire himself. So, uh, good luck with that, buddy. Yep. Good luck with that. Hey, buddy, you trying to hunt me down? You trying to hit me down? You, uh, you, your friends are gonna hunt you down now. Uh, you, since, uh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna obey me, you're gonna do what I say. I did not do that all day, but I do embarrass uh, about uh, a vampire hunter by uh, making him a vampire himself, so, uh, making a vampire, making him into a vampire as so. well.
trying to find where he's at. Good evening, Miss Brannigan. I have a lot to do, Dr. Reed. If there's something you need, ask. Otherwise, I must get back to work. Do you require medical assistance, nurse? I will be fine. As soon as I can get some sleep. Nurse, you won't be able to... <laughs> Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. See my truck. Oh man, that must be very embarrassing for him. Oh, but he's gonna be very thirsty. Yeah, he's gonna be very thirsty. Very thirsty. He's gonna be very thirsty. Yeah. So Pre will never left Doris's theater after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters.
Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. Downstairs. Oh, it must be down here. It's locked. I'll open to the other side. It's locked, all right.
It's locked. I cannot enter.
Okay, I can't find it all the clues over there, so I might have to figure this one out. Gather all Gather information about
just make me more noise. Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. Ha! 
Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. I'm eating into it in Baltimore. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Jonathan, I cannot say I'm ready for the round of questions. Why would the God of Prewin believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession. Because I offered you shelter at my hospital. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, I have a yet greater legend. Why is the guy of Queen so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt. Launched by, by the guard of Queen Leave his an evil creature plotting his return. 
Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's School is next to no intelligence. All I know is that he is supposed to be the oldest of all the British families. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to me. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No. I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. A terrible episode. It was a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That's all I know. No, Edward, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother. She seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashby's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood from my research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical! You betrayed two of your patients at the same time! How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. No, Edgar, you are not going to die. Unless you want to. 
What do you mean? I can save you. I can turn your broken body into one like mine. You truly would? After all I've done, after all that's been said, you would offer me this gift? I have no way of knowing which punishment would be worse, Edgar. But it is not for me to decide. So? Oh, please, Jonathan, please. I beg you. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always searched for. Very well. Face an eternity of guilt. I'm ready. Oh, indeed, I am ready. So Harriet Jones became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. I must tell Elizabeth. Better go, stupid! <laughs>
garlic, but there may be a substitute in the Hamburg Hospital drug storage.
There it is. Insulin. Much more efficient than garlic against blood poisoning and sepsis. And much less dangerous than me. Thank you, Dr. Polesky.
sacred and precious relic. Why would you... You found Marshall's memoirs. You should have destroyed that book. I need the antidote to save this city, Recolor. It is within me to take your words as truth. I want to. But I must know more. What precisely are your plans? Stop the age. I have found the carrier. The infection source. It may be science or some supernatural power that's responsible for all this. But I will harness either or both to end the epidemic. A vampire doctor. My god, you're a terrifying creature. Jonathan. Do you not understand? We wanted the same thing from the outset. A means to end this vampire epidemic. Not enemies. Maybe that is so. Take it then. I see no other hope for this city. If this is some trick, you will be damned. Thank you. Can we speak more? Indeed. Why not? Why are you here? The man who raised me after the brutal murder of my parents. He's buried here. Were both your parents killed by vampires? Yes. And yet worse. My father returned to Dublin a vampire. And tore out my mother's throat. And who was this man? Carl Eldritch. One time leader of pre -war. Killed my father in front of me. Helped me hunt my brother Ain after teaching me how to kill leeches. How are you adapting to immortality? I feel so powerful it gives me shivers. I could be the greatest vampire hunter ever. You are worse than I am, truth. Will you leave the guard now that you are what you are? Are we not creatures of deceit? I could hide my nature from my men, or name a successor, go my own way. I know not yet my path. Will you hunt me down? You are a vicious beast, Reed. Perhaps the city needs you at this time, but I shall not forget what you did. Farewell, my Do not stretch your luck, Reed.
whose blood could be purer than that of William Marshall. Lord Redgrave will have to spare you. We got to lock the front back door fools. Oh my god. Got the back door. I knew they were going to forget the back door. Oh, it's the front door. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's too bad, bitch. I'm taking off the goddamn door. I should have updated my I'm still a son of grata in the Asgard Club. If I want to speak with you, Red Good evening. Good evening. What are you doing here, traitor? I shall smite you for this audacity. I'm not here to bicker, Lord Redgrave. I can put an end to this epidemic, but I need your assistance to do so. Good. We've held out thus far, but the time has come to put an end to this crisis. Tell me, what do you need? The blood of William Marshall. Blood of William Marshall? Of my maker? Are you mad? His blood is the purest of all. My maker profited to me on the battlefield. I cannot hand it to you. This is the city's last hope. I'm gonna go for this. This is more important than the club you owe me. This is London's last hope. I see. Well, in that case, given the gravity of the situation, I suppose I can spare you. Thank you, my lord. 
If you manage to save this city, you'll prove yourself a veritable servant of the crown. So Godspeed, Dr. Reed. Our fate lies only in your hands. Oh, oh by the way, I'm easily defeated, guys. I love doing this. Being, being an asshole and then being a nice guy for a second. Look, look, this is what city's like, so. Good evening, good evening. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Goodbye. sir. Give my Goodbye. best regards to your mother.
Hello. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long. Do you think Avery is right? Do you think I should take better care of you? I don't blame you. But you abandoned us. A mother should not survive her children. It's unbearable to know you're not here. I wish I could stay here and take care of you, but I don't belong here. My new home is an empty one. As cold as night on this bread as blood. You don't have to apologize to me, Johnny. Do you think I didn't notice how much you have changed? Have I changed that much, mother? Am I still your son? You are still, and you'll always be. Despite your pale skin, bloody eyes, and that echo of sadness. Okay. Tell me, mother, how are you? All alone in this big house with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, mother. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. I chose to stay away. I didn't want to put you in danger. How can you put me in danger, my son? You're dead, just like everyone else. And the dead can't harm the living. Can they? I don't know, you want to test that out. Goodbye, bye. Try to rest. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Aubrey, I'm not sure visiting Italy is a good idea. Yes, Mr. Jonathan. Hello, everybody. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long.
do you need my medical attention? I've all rights. Don't worry about them. I don't know the, the answers to everything to make it uh, a 1,000, but, um, man, I'm thirsty.
I hate when it does that shit. Good evening, Mr. Easter. How have you been since you returned home? Dr. Reed. Oh, thank God you returned safely from these awful streets. I was so worried about my father that I left without thanking you properly. Please don't mention it, please. Good. I found him, you know. My dad. Or what was left of him. I think my abductor intended to do the same thing to me. What can you tell me? Nothing. I was a waitress in a pub. Now I'm unemployed. Were you no. Be very careful, Miss Teasley. You were lucky to escape death once. But vampires lurk everywhere. You killed my kidnapper by yourself, didn't you? No offense, Doctor, but you're just a doctor. I don't see why I couldn't do the same. What do you intend to do? Dad always told me. Louise, if you want something, don't stop until you have it. I did my research and I found it. Ichabod Frogmorton, professional vampire hunter. I'll be his apprentice. Yeah, we're gonna have to get rid of her. What can you tell me about this area? I've never really liked this part of town. It was where my father wanted to live. I won't remain here much longer. What exactly don't you like about it? People here are contemptuous and elitist. My dad always said, Louise, always treat people like you want them to treat you. Louise, tell me what you really think about your father's sacrifice to save you. I'm proud he went after me. I forgive him all his harsh words, all his bloody attitudes. I only wish I could tell him how much I loved him. Yes. It can be traumatic, having the chance to say goodbye to those we love. Yes, Doctor. And there's no treatment for that type of pain, isn't that right? That may be the last thing my father taught me. You seem to cherish your father a great deal. Dad was the best. Kept an eye on me, but let me make my own mistakes. Louise used to say, mistakes are the best teacher. I really liked him. I'm sorry I didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye. That's all right. Great grand man. Nothing bad can happen to him. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale, and be careful until we meet again. Good evening, Miss Ashford. And good evening to you, Doc. What is your opinion? It seems. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother, Lucy. She...
Donna, Donna for my dear. I can never thank you enough. Thank me for what? You're nothing but the prince of a fallen kingdom. Pembroke is a graveyard, littered with corpses and scouts. Indeed, but is it not your own doing, John? How could it end truly when you have plunged your fangs into so many throats hereabouts? What about the Brotherhood? Will they eject you? I remain a member. I have information to provide now. Intelligence from the other side, if I may say so. They won't banish you. Not so long as I behave. Have you news of Geoffrey McCullum? I'm sure both of you would have quite an interesting discussion after recent events. He left the hospital without being treated for the severe beating you gave him. We'll meet again soon enough. Does not the prospect of meeting him as a vampire thrill you? The two old enemies reunited most mortal. Maybe we could even share a glass of... Why? I really don't know if he will accept his condition. He has spent his life beheading leeches, you know. How do you feel since he changed? Absolutely fine. Did you know I can determine the health of every patient or nurse just by looking at him? Fascinating. Have you not taken a life yet? Don't you think that's a private matter? I would not ask you such an indiscreet question. Do you feel the hunger? Yes. It's very peculiar. Not like mortal hunger at all. It's like I'm never sated. Fortunately, blood is no rare commodity at Pembroke. What will you do now that you are a Experiment, my dear colleague. I have an eternity to make scientific progress. I could be the only scientist able to undertake extreme experiments upon himself. My god, Edgar. Did you learn nothing from your forays into folly? I have, I swear. No more experiments on mortals. See? I said mortals. <laughs> How quickly the mind adapts! What kind of experiments? Well, who knows? Nervous shock, brain damage, pain and recovery. There's almost no limit to what my body can now endure. I could be the next Henry Head. Goodbye, Edgar. I am certain we'll meet again. Jonathan, John. my dear, I can never thank you enough. Thank me for what? You're nothing but the pr Indeed.
Good evening, Mr. Fishburne. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you worried about the conditions here in London? Good, Doctor. Tell me, who will take the blame for your murders now that I'm dead? Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Goodbye, Miss Cox. There's nothing to do. You again. What do you want?
my sweet queen. Who will protect you from yourself? Will you cry for me? Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Tell me your feelings about Booth's belief in monsters, Edwina. It makes him look weak in front of the boys, that's my feeling. Ghosts don't scare me. You don't believe he really saw something then? I don't care what he saw or not. All I know is that a real man keeps his fears to himself if he wants to be obeyed. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Are you worried? I never really is there anything unsure. Rufus, tell me what you really think about Seymour Fishburn. Seymour, he, he just scares me a lot. Actually, he scares many people around here, even big fellows. You mean his brutality is infamous, even in this shady part of town? That's impressive. Yes, sir. How someone like that can be related to Mrs. Fishburne, but it beggars belief. The patience of a mother for her child knows no limits. None of us would be here otherwise. You're right, and I'm certainly didn't mean any disrespect to the woman who takes such good care of me. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Aren't you? Hi.
It's locked. Evening, Evening, Professor. Evening, Evening. Mr. Reed. So what they said about me was true. I really was Rufus the Curse, destined to suffer until I die.
still working at this hour? That's... Welcome back, Doctor. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss, and I'm much older and all. But I like her, for sure. What is bothering you, then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. It hurts to see her like that. how to use a pistol. Sabrina is a nice girl who's already faced a lot of problems in her life. She does not need another. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Sabrina, my friends, what would they become without me? If only I could tell her, tell them. Too late, too late.
Oh yeah, I forgot to get through that. I think he's on the other side where there's area is. You again? What do you want? See? 
see you again, Mr. Reed. Why do you and your sister Giselle have such opposing views, Lottie? Giselle whines she lost her job due to her unionist activities, which started her drinking. Truth is, she got fired because she's an alcoholic. And you don't share your sister's views? On the contrary, I totally believe that workers need to unite to fight. I, I, just, I just disagree, disagree with Giselle. Giselle hates hates all all wealth and riches. What do you mean? I don't believe that you were an automatic arsehole because you were born into a good family. Perhaps your sister's addiction to alcohol is the result of her despair, but not the cause. Perhaps you're right. But I'm tired of her playing the outraged and martyred social fighter while I earn money for both of us. Don't you think she wants to get better? I believe she knows her alcoholism is a worry to me. And that's another reason why she continues to drink so much. Lottie, tell me about the death of your mother. Giselle killed her, plain and simple. She killed her with her daily whims, her laziness, and her complaints. That's quite a statement. You can't kill someone because you're fickle. Mother was very ill, but I forgave Giselle. What I couldn't stand was how she cried at her funeral like she was the one left alone. Perhaps your sister is not as tough as you are. I know that, and I don't blame her. It just makes me sad that my own sister is the person I understand the least. Giselle is the only family you have left. Don't you think it's time you forgave her? Sometimes words are harder to forgive than acts, Dr. Reed. Yes, Doctor. Yes, doctor. Farewell, Farewell, sir. Take good, Take good care, care of your flock and of yourself. Good evening, Mr. Throckmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? 
Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Where's that one guy? Good evening, Mr. Grader. Are you sure nobody followed you here, Dr. Reed? stood by your side, we both could have changed things for good round here.
wet with. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately?
This place has been ransacked. They've all been slaughtered. Pre-war. No, not their style. Where has Harriet gone? She must have left a trail I could follow. Where is old Bridget? Damn. If I'd come earlier, they would still be alive. Take not a step further, child, for you are unprepared. You, at last. I wondered when you would show your face again. Step away. We have nothing to discuss. Desist, child. You cannot confront the monstrosity unleashed upon this land without due preparation. I shall not allow it. All right. But no more riddles. Enough of the obscure songs and prophecies. I ask questions, and you answer them. My words have been as clear as crystal lakes, my child. You seem unwilling to drink, to listen, to learn. Why did you choose me? Only you could provide a modern, scientific answer to this ancient, mystical threat. What kind of modern answer? Disease, contagion, and contamination. How they course through veins is your dominion, my child. Your choices have made you. Only you can save this land. Speak to me of this ancient threat. The blood of hate. Vessel of the wrath of the goddess. When she awakens, a disaster will be born into this world. For she is hunger and anger. What is your true appearance? I do not understand. This is who I am. Blood. You are made of blood. blood. Surely, Surely you are joking. Why would I? And no, I am not made of blood. I am blood. Blood is what I am since my birth and for eternity. But who but are, you, are you really? Tell, Tell me your me. name. I am your maker. I am the servant of the Red Goddess and protector of this land. I have many names. Just give me one then. There are those who call me Murdin Wild, the Wild Wound Man. But I never was a man. I was born out of blood. I'm here to stop Harriet Jones. She is the original carrier. The well from which this corruption flows. I have heard you, but be wary. Harriet Jones's mind is no more. She has metamorphosed into an apocalypse. Born from... Drenched in and driven by the blood of hate. What is the blood of hate? It is the curse of the goddess. It is the hunger in you. The need for blood. The will to strike and to punish. To spit in the eye of God. Tell me about this disaster. I know London fell victim to such a thing in 1666. A disaster is pure anger born through blood. Its name means bad star, for they only appear when our queen unleashes her unquenchable wrath upon the world. 
And who is this queen? She is the Red Goddess, the Queen of Blood. In my youth, a hundred lifetimes ago, she was worshipped as the Morrigan. She is my mother. She is yours, too. The Morrigan? The Celtic Goddess of War? Is this a ruse of some kind? She has been worshipped in many forms throughout the ages. The true nature of the Red Queen is beyond your comprehension, eluding even mine. But know this, she is a vengeful mother. So the disaster is some sort of accident. A disease vampires carry dormant in their blood, waiting to emerge. That's your modern answer. But a disaster is at the same time both less and more. Tell me what it is then, in your own words. A disaster is the pure will of our queen. Whenever she dreams of walking this earth, she awakes in this putrid vessel. I only wish to know how to put an end to this epidemic. To perform an act so noble, you must protect yourself from its poisonous kiss. I know. McCullum used such a serum when trying to kill me. However, I have produced a more efficacious version of the antidote. Your final task awaits you at the end of these tunnels. I've known for ages you were worthy of this challenge. My champion, Bittersweet. Will it be over then? Once I've defeated this creature? Yes. The threat will dissipate like so much smoke, for you will have purified its source. And then what? What will become of me? How would I know? I am no god, and your fate is in your own hands, for you are our champion. What will happen thereafter? What future awaits me beyond these dark tunnels? Your fate, my child, and the fate of this land. A disaster is about to enter this world to smite us all and teach us humility. You are our final. Thanks. You tricked me. My sister died for your schemes. I have brought suffering and tragedy into this world. I am not, nor will I ever be your champion. Very soon you'll come to know that sacrifice is sometimes necessary. I understand the grudge a child bears towards his father and mother. Be brave, my child. These poor skulls don't stand a chance. I have this thirst for blood. I was a good 
No one could ever defeat you, mother of us all, for you are our every root and leaf. You've always been my most amusing son. Then go back to sleep, my queen, and smile at us from your dreams. Did they feel my wrath? Have they suffered enough? More than ever, mother of us all. Until the next time. Until the next time. Yeah, okay. So it's over then, young Ekon. You have put an end to this terrible menace. Old Bridget? What are you doing here? This is my realm, Ekon. This is Sewer Skull territory. But they were all massacred by the monstrosity that Harriet became. Others will come, engendered by deceitful vampires. I don't mean you, of course.
I thought you'd been slaughtered with all the other sewer scars. I was up above, in search of help when Harriet suddenly turned into that thing. I have no idea what it was. It's over. I have avenged my poor Mary. Yes, you prevailed in the end. I hope you'll forgive me for the way I treated you when first you presented yourself at our gate. No need to apologize, really. Perhaps there will be no stories told or songs sung of what's happened here today. But I'll know the truth. Jonathan Reed, newborn vampire, stepped forward and saved us all. I'm honored to be part of this city's legend. Thank you, old Bridget. May I ask you just one question? How could I refuse you anything now? I'll answer just as I answered Lady Ashbury when we met a few nights ago. Who are you, really? I was born with the name Bridget Eleanor Wellington. In 1738, my beloved and immortal husband decided to preserve my beauty and youth forever by making me drink his blood. You were Lord Redgrave's wife. Then the pompous the fool, fool rejected, rejected him, did he not? It was it about was 200 years ago. Peace found me in time. And I sincerely hope it will find you too. Now that all is over. No, it's not over. I may have ended the vampire epidemic, but I still need answers from the woman I love. I feared you would say that. Go then, young Ekon, and face your fate. Just remember that I'll always be here for you. London has been cleansed. This catastrophe came about when an ancient malignant will crossed paths with mortal imprudence. For now, we are safe. For now, my craving for blood remains. Red like hate, red like hunger, red as life and death, passing from one immortal to another, from predator to victim, patiently biding its time to rise again. London has been cleansed for now, but there's a simmering hatred, fear, and old grudges. When will we succumb, mortals and immortals alike? The next disaster is only a matter of time. My only hope now is to catch the woman I love, to understand why she fled, and unmask the secret that has been lurking in her blood for so long. Well, this is it. Lady Ashbury's domain. Why am I not surprised it's not on any maps? I'd better hurry. sent back to the bottomless pit from when she came. The nightmare is almost over. I am here to say goodbye. The sun's warmth exhausts me. Soon I will rejoin my queen in her endless sleep. It is over. You did well. So our beloved mother will just go back to sleep? Now that enough people have suffered, is that it? No, Jonathan. The Morrigan has been appeased because you dared confront her. You have 
prevailed, my bittersweet champion. So a little bit of a goddamn just And what are you to her? Her counterpart? Her opponent in some timeless game? She is my mother. My dreadful and sour-tempered mother. She is yours too, in a way. But you are not born from her terrible womb like me. You are but a distant child. Well, that's nice. What does she seek? Revenge? Retribution? She seeks nothing, since she only dreams of it. In the ancient time when I was young, her name meant ghostly queen. Pray she never fully awakens, for her wrath knows no bounds. Why did Harriet Jones become a disaster? You are the doctor. You hold the knowledge needed to answer such a question. Have you the answer? I noticed that all the icons were female, as if a male couldn't endure the metamorphosis. Harriet was also a bitter and resentful woman, as was her daughter. If the Morrigan prefers despoiled women to become the vessels of her wrath, we should be thankful that but one disaster hath been cast upon this wobbling world. Icors seem to carry various diseases. They did not merely turn people into skulls. Their presence alone spreads death. Who knows whether the Red Queen awakens when cursed mortals endure such epidemics? Or if the contagions emerge like a curse as she awaits. This is not over. I am here to find the true origin of the blood of hate. It is unwise to interfere with a tale rooted so deeply in the suffering of others. What will happen to Ascalon? Will you let them run the country from the shadows? I don't interfere with petty political intrigues. Ascalon was built upon the lie of a lineage. Such a deceit cannot last forever. But Lord Redgrave definitely possessed Marshall's blood. Untainted blood from the greatest vampire knight. Really? I wonder how he managed to acquire it. Perhaps I should retrieve this artifact before going back to sleep. What will become of the vampire hunters? In their leader, you now have a spy behind enemy lines. By guiding your progeny, you may yet protect your immortal friends for some time to come. If you dare. What will become of the Brotherhood? I foresee trouble for them now that your progeny considers becoming the new Primate. But I'm certain the current Primate has no wish to resign. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I got two progenies. I, I could have gotten third progenies by the rich asshole, but I didn't feel like doing that. I feel like that old rich asshole. I don't feel like having progenies. I don't know. Well, I could have three progenies, the black of fucking three stooges, controlling three stooges around, but hey man, you're not supposed to pay, how are your guys' paperwork doing? Oh, fine, sir, yeah, look at that right here.
what I could have done. I could have gotten three people on the project. Like oh, three projects. But what if it had been? Then you would have failed, I suppose. For the blood of hate would have corrupted you too. When he fought me, Geoffrey McCullum used a serum made of King Arthur's blood. Since then, I have discovered that it was vampire blood. Whose blood was it? You just said it. It was the blood of a king. The blood of the champion I chose to save this land in its time of greatest peril. King Arthur was also your progeny. Why am I not surprised? Yes, he was. But he failed in the end. And for centuries the land suffered his defeat. Who are your sons? Why do you bid them farewell now? You are my son, as is William Marshall. This is madness. How many have you created? Who else? Shakespeare? Isaac Newton? Alfred the Great? Francis Drake? Thomas More? Guy Fawkes? My progeny is scarce for I rarely feel the urge to protect this land anymore. But yes, one of those you named is your immortal brother. Maybe you should meet one night. So that is all we are to you. Puppets you create to defeat some threat born from a dreaming devil. No. You are my son. I am proud of you. I mourn when you fail. Speak clearly, then, and answer my last question. What is it? Did I defeat the epidemic? Now you found the castle, Jonathan Reed. Only you can answer that. Farewell, my child. I shall dream about you. I cannot enter. The castle walls look decrepit. Maybe I can find a way to sneak in.
getting really slow right now. I'm ready to move. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think I smell Elizabeth's perfume. She must be here somewhere. Unknown area. This castle is falling apart. That sweet fragrance. Elizabeth's perfume. She was here. And recently. This painting looks suspicious. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you allow my portrait to watch over you while you sleep. I'm flattered. Like most castles, this one has a crypt, and it holds something special inside.
Here's another switch. I should keep looking. What are these symbols? I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work. Here's another switch. I should keep looking. What are these symbols? I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work.
sword and a moon are the symbols I should look for. to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You told me that. Blood is approaching. kings, former regent and saviour of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Dr. Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I take care of my father. Ever since he became... Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. 
Unfortunately, it has rarely come to that. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes, to end it once and for all. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. I never thought I'd say this. But I think London's last hope is in Prewin's hands. To stem the epidemic, many districts must be cleansed. Mortals defend their interests as we defend ours. It is only natural. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this, through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation and the will of a creature so inexplicably evil, she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. He gave you the antidote? Yes. And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was. And still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty echo, who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels, to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But, you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. William Marshall infected you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury, and that's all I wish to be. I need to know more. 
I want to know who you really are. Where you were born. Where you lived. I was born Elizabeth Samantha Mary Englewood in 1551 in Hertfordshire. Oh, God. Okay. Alrighty, it's getting tired. I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Oh, my ass hurts. Oh, my God. I'm saying that. It took a long night. I'm gonna drive there. Just how nights. My father found the pub in Hoddesdon. Are you satisfied? How did you meet William Marshall? He was an echo for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you. Since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse. Forgetting the danger as you turned your back. Like the newborn fool you were. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for you. Go on, Jonathan. But... Be careful. Yes, Sir William. My God. You really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak. For my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine, sir. What is it you want then? Come and bite me. 
I found your research on the antidote. The tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. King Richard and Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please, tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have, I have seen them for many times. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly. Swift and implacable. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible, godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I return to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church, beneath my empty tomb. I always love to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees, begging for forgiveness. 
I swore I would find a way to make things right. How did you meet Elizabeth? Times were tough. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come. I chose to save her. When was that? It was so long ago. A few years after Elizabeth of England and Catherine of France established their alliance against Spain. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn. Owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. You agree to be confined here then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, I asked to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. We could set you free. Let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? in this abandoned factory. I'm not that frightened man anymore. I've learned so much. Done so much. I see. So there is nothing worth living for in this world anymore. Farewell, my love. Farewell. I guess farewell.
One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Child born from darkness whose path he must find. Now the song is sung and your path chosen. England is safe, the price paid most dear. But what do you care? You are the one who keeps killing. You've chosen your path, my fallen champion, like others before you. Pray to lust and desire, slave to the everlasting thirst. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber. Until alas, she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. Push option. Well, if we're going to take Granny down to shopping and stuff, I don't know where she's going to get stuff back. Probably get it down to hand. I'm going to try to get down to hand and get some stuff. Yeah, see, the chapter came back up already. It's only three degrees. Well, no matter what it was, it was a little cooler, we'll say. Try to cool the place down. The temperature goes down, but as soon as you close up the doors and everything, the temperature goes right back up. It was, what, 75 in here or <sighs> the whole game. Something else. 